We're now standing in front of the Tom Bradley International Airport in Los Angeles, LAX Airport. LAX Airport has been designated as one of 16 contamination centers around the country. That's the Centers for Disease Control Contamination Centers. As you can see in the back, people are coming and going, mostly foreigners, all the time. Now, Ebola has hit the United States. Today, we are providing the information that an individual traveling from Liberia has been diagnosed with Ebola in the United States. The question is, many people are asking and many people want answers to, how big a threat is the Ebola virus to Americans? Not only in Los Angeles where we are, but of course nationwide. I, I don't think uh, that uh, in America we're going to see the death toll because we do have an excellent public health system. Uh, what Dr. Frieden said today is absolutely right. We will be able to quickly isolate the disease. And there, some people will get sick and some people will die, but you're going to see pockets. You're going to see four or five or ten people. You're not going to see hundreds of people. I don't see that happening. It's a major consideration and it's a major concern. The global impact of Ebola is no longer in West Africa. It's now global. It's now hit this country. It cannot be quarantined behind one border. So now many people are asking, and many health professionals are saying and assuring us, no, it can't happen here, even though we've had some cases. We are equipped in this country to handle it. Um, I understand that there are public health and measures. I understand that they are monitoring at airports, and I applaud that. That is good. But I think it is inevitable. Uh, we don't live in the 14th century. This is not the bubonic plague where we're going to build a fort around the city and everybody else outside. It, it, that isn't going to happen. We live in a global society. People move around freely. There are tens of millions of people coming into this country every day, coming into Russia every day, coming into the European Union every day, and they're coming out of Africa. Uh, you can go to uh, Liberia today, to Monrovia, and get direct flights to the United States. That, in fact, is the case. It's not West Africa. We certainly know that uh, medical services, the ability to monitor, the ability to actually quarantine those with Ebola is certainly superior to anything else here. However, given the fact is it's a communicable disease, thousands, perhaps millions of people are coming in and out of the United States and other countries, we are no longer fail safe away from that. The doctors and nurses isolated the patient immediately. They say he left Liberia on the 19th, arrived stateside on the 20th, developed symptoms on the 24th and walked into the hospital on the 26th, but was sent home. When he felt so sick and had to return on Sunday, he needed an ambulance. Tonight, they tell us he's strong enough to talk and is saying he's hungry. But compare this patient's story to the dramatic hospitalizations of the American patients diagnosed in Africa, flown into the country in specially outfitted planes and walking into the hospital in protective suits. So we're asking, and the Hutchinson report is asking, we're going to be visiting the Centers for Disease Control as part of our report on this question. How really safe are we in L.A. and the United States from the Ebola virus? We're going to be examining all phases of that. We're doing that in, in the Hutch Hutchinson report. And we're asking that question and we're going to be challenging not only government officials, but the Centers for Disease Control. Give us some answers to that because our health is at stake, it's a major issue, it's something of great concern that we all must be certainly concerned about.